Hello professors of CV154, my name is Jeffrey Ha, and I will be presenting Group 3's Quantitative Analysis on the Memory Separation Lab. Separation processes are widely used by chemical engineers on the industrial scale to isolate desired products from an extreme. And in particular, semi-permeable membranes are effective when separating two miscible products with different diffusion rates. Applications of large-scale membrane separation include uranium isotope separation and water desalination, in which diagrams can be found in the appendix. And however, our focus here today in our experiment was gas separation of nitrogen and oxygen gas using this tubular cartridge used uh, through a non-porous membrane. Unfortunately, a sharp isolation membrane separation is often difficult to achieve. Hence, our main goal was to recommend op uh, optimal operating conditions that would maximize nitrogen gas purity um, separated from air. And our methodology is the following. A feed airstream, assumed to be binary, enters and flows through the memory cartridge, ultimately leaving as a retentive stream. Um, here, a portion of the feed gas diffuses through the non-porous membrane, in which oxygen gas diffuses much faster than nitrogen, and this causes the permeate stream to be oxygen-rich. And this permeate stream um, exits the cartridge on either ends, depending on the memory cartridge, uh, membrane configuration. To accomplish our goal, we altered relevant variables and recorded the flow rates and compositions of the retentive and permeate streams. And um, we will explain our, our conclusions and findings throughout this presentation, alongside with a mathematical model that we developed to further understand our memory cartridge. Um, before moving on, um, we, want to, uh, we want to define a membrane selectivity, uh, which is also known as ideal separation factor, as the, ratio be um, as the ratio between oxygen and nitrogen gas transmissibility values. The following equation is an analog of fixed first law, in which K sub i is the transmissibility of the gas. And this equation is particularly useful when we are assuming a very dilute gas species, hence the Henry's law, and no mass transfer limitations other than diffusion through the membrane. Uh, P sub i r and P sub i p are partial pressures at which at each the retentate and permeate side, and um, when we calculated the gas, uh, since we calculated the gas, gas transmissibility values using pure nitrogen and pure oxygen, we can rewrite this equation using uh, total pressures rather than partial pressures. Permeate flux was determined by dividing the permeate molar flow rate with the affected membrane area, considering the multi-tubular membrane module. Then permeate flux was plotted versus the, uh, the pressure difference defined as the difference between the retentate and permeate stream pressures for both pure gases. Since molar flux and pressure difference are proportional, as shown in this equation, we used the linear free inter uh, intercept free linear regression method to find the transmissibility values of each gas. By finding the ratio between both gas transmissibil uh, transmissibility values, we determined the selectivity of 8.56 and 8.15 uh, for the two member configurations. Our team conduct, uh, concluded that the, the, the de de deviation arose from procedure error since selectivity is an intrinsic property of a membrane given two gases. By analyzing our data, we realized that there are three key factors that affect nitrogen gas purity in the retentate stream. The first is configuration, and our team concluded that a counted current configuration yields higher purity. In the co-current configuration, um, the feed and permeate stream flows in the same direction and exit at the same ends of the tube, while a counted current configuration has opposite direction of flow. The counted current configuration consistently provided a higher retentive purity in, the compar in comparison to the co-current configuration across all operating parameters, and the remaining plots are on Appendix C. The reason for this higher purity is because the counter-current membrane configuration maintains a constant um, oxygen uh, concentration gradient, and here the concentration gradient is the driving force for the permeation in our membrane module. On the contrary, the co-current membrane configuration exhibits a decreasing um, concentration gradient along the membrane as permeate stream becomes more oxygen rich while the retentate becomes more um, nitrogen rich. Um, 
Thus, for the most effective error separation, our module must be configured for counter-current flow. The quality of separation is also increased with higher inlet pressure and lower retentate flow. Increasing feed pressure while maintaining constant retentate flow rates and flow configuration produced higher nitrogen purity. When we increased feed, the oxygen partial pressure in the tube side increased, while the partial pressure of oxygen in the permeate, uh, in the permeate uh, remained constant. Since the differences in pressures is the driving force, higher pressure, a higher pressure difference gave more permeation and thus higher retentate nitrogen purity. Here, we also observe that in both configurations, um, retentate flow rate increases under constant feed pressure and nitrogen purity in the retentate decreases. Um, when the retentate flow rate is higher, oxygen molecules have less time to permeate through the membrane, thereby decreasing the retentate nitrogen purity. Unfortunately, having higher nitrogen gas and nitrogen purity in the retentate stream has its trade-offs, as nitrogen purity has an inverse relationship with nitrogen recovery. Here, nitrogen recovery is defined as the ratio between uh, the molar rate, uh, the ratio between nitrogen molar flow rates in the retentate and that over the feed stream. Um, Operating conditions that maximize nitrogen gas purity minimize the nitrogen gas recovery at the retentate because of the inverse relationship. And this is because while both gases, uh, this is because both gases permeated through the membrane, although just at different rates. Um, we built a mathematical model based on our experimental data to predict the dependence of permeate flow rate and purity in our membrane cartridge. Our team performed a molar shell balance for oxygen and our differential volume of the shell side. And further details, derivations, um, everything else can be found in Appendix F. Our final pellet uh, malt balance gives us a differential equation as the following. Here, Y is the permeate oxygen composition and V is the permeate molar flow rate. We added a plus minus sign here because uh, it basically covers both countercurrent and co-current flow. Unfortunately, Solving this differential equation analytically is impossible because we have four different variables, all dependent on Z. Um, alongside with the mass balance, uh, mass balance and mole balance equations for nitrogen and oxygen gas, uh, we get four equations. Uh, we could technically use iteration to solve all four differential equations simultaneously. However, that would be very impractical. Um, to simplify our model, we employed assumptions, um, including perfect radio, uh, radio mixing on our shell side, and other uh, other relevant other relevant assumptions, um, and these assumptions will be further explained in depth in the appendix. Uh, we begin by assuming a homogeneous composition of oxygen on the tube and shell side. Um, by assuming no spatial concentration gradients, we can treat the mole fraction as a constant rather than a depend uh, a function depending on pos uh, position on radial position. Um, the oxygen concentrations on the tube side and at the membranes were assumed equal, uh, which is denoted as Y sub M in the following equation. We then non-dimensionalized pressure and rearranged the previous expression and to get a quadratic equation. And here, um, the equation, uh, the expression for Y sub M is basically the solution to that quadratic equation. Um, the total permeate flow rate, molar flow rate, um, can be modeled by the following equation. And again, all derivations are shown in the appendix, so please check it out. The oxygen molar flow rate was determined by multiplying the effective, em uh, effective area of the membrane with the oxygen molar flux through the membrane. And using a mass balance between the inlet and two outlet streams, our team developed uh, equations for the retentate molar flow rates and the retentate nitrogen composition. These two equations were used to determine the op uh, optimal operating conditions for a modeled membrane in a spreadsheet. Upon using linear interpolation and iterations um, in Excel, our team found a range of desired operating parameters. Uh, so this graph plots the empirical retentate uh, compos composition at each operating conditions, while the dotted lines visualize the red retentate compositions estimated from our model. Um, our, simplif um, our simplified model doesn't predict a difference between co a co and counter current flow because it no longer attributes any spatial dependence to the mole fractions of um, the concentrations of oxygen nitrogen gas. 
And as you can see in the plot on the right, uh, since our desired product stream is the retented stream with at least 95% purity, any operation conditions that yield a retented composition in the blue region would be good. Unfortunately, our model has notable limitations. And, and these limitations include due to the assumptions that we made during uh, developing an expression for Y sub M on uh, permanent flow rate, we actually observe a nitrogen gas, a nitrogen purity exceeding 100% here. Um, and this indicates how our model isn't very sophisticated and should be refined. We also didn't have enough information of retentate flow rates under 50 show rate. And this leads to the fact that we can't, uh, and this is because we, and, and because we cannot use linear extrapolation to simulate retentate flow rate at uh, lower flow rates, um, any, uh, we couldn't like make a model for lower flow rates. Um, since we want at least 95% nitrogen purity in a retentive stream, our team understood that the retentate molar flow rate has to be low enough while still having a high pressure. Within this range of possible operating conditions, the model suggests that a feed pressure of 410 kilopascals and a retentive flow rate of 50 show rate would be ideal. The most profitable operation, minimize, uh, operation minimizes uh, input, uh, input cost and maximizes output cost, uh, output value. Our team decided to determine the electricity cost and needed to compress, needed to compress atmospheric gas to desired feed pressure, feed stream pressure. This electricity cost would also depend on the operating conditions of our memory system. When compressing gas, we assumed isothermal compression to find the power at which an air compressor would need to operate. And all the relevant uh, derivation of the work expression here on the left would be found in the appendix. Using this equation, uh, we determined the electricity cost of two extreme cases uh, within the possible operating conditions. Um, here, the first extreme case is when we maximize the product flow rate, um, which also did require the maximum feed pressure and the membrane could withstand. The second extreme case is when we minimized feed pressure while still producing a 95% gas purity. Considering the elect industrial electricity cost in California, we concluded that the second extreme, uh, second extreme operating case has, um, has an operating cost of 0 0.595 uh, cents for each cubic meter um, of nitrogen gas produced. Of course, there's no guarantee that these two extreme, op uh, extreme operating conditions yield a minimum operating cost. However, since our model wasn't very sophisticated and shown in the last slide, um, it would be kind of hard to determine the efficiency of intermediate conditions. Um, and in reality, um, it would be necessary to find this Goldilocks operating condition, considering, how, uh, considering many different uh, factors that weren't explicitly discussed in our presentation today. Um, in real case scenario, we extrapolated the 50 show rate to retentate flow rate and found that a feed pressure of 509, 590 kilopascals is needed to produce a desired stream. Um, considering how the membrane can only withstand up to 620 kilopascals, um, which would require higher feed pressure, a higher retentate flow rate wouldn't be safe. Upon calculating the electricity cost for nitrogen production and the market price of nitrogen gas, we concluded a profit, uh, profitability of $0.089 per cubic, me uh, cubic meter of nitrogen gas produced. Um, since, every, since each module, the each general 210 module is around $400 in which results uh, in which we inquired, uh, made an inquiry at the general um, helping desk. Um, we we find a return on investment of 4,500 cubic meters of nitrogen gas produced. And please recall that this value is a very rough estimation, um, and it can basically change significantly based on the following factors. To further increase our profitability, we need to maximize the earnings from our output streams. And while selling nitrogen gas would only yield a profitability of $0.131, um, connecting a Haber-Bosch reactor with the membrane cartridge would be able to um, produce ammonia, which has around three times the market value compared to that of nitrogen gas. 
Another method would be to market our side product stream, the oxygen-rich gas, and granting it economic value. Um, originally, we assumed that ox the oxygen-rich gas with around 30 or 40 percent gas purity um, is useless and it doesn't it ha doesn't have any economic value. But we learned that this gas can actually be wide is widely used in neonatal resuscitation applications. And plus, finding people who would be interested to buy our side products that would be very good and would increase our overall profitability. Our experiment successfully determined the optimal operating conditions for a given membrane system. And we also learned that in acquiring higher nitrogen gas purity has its trade-offs and sharper isolation in the membrane separation requires greater input. While nitrogen has increased purity with countercurrent flow, decreased flow rates, and increased feed pressure, the recovery rate decreased and the energy cost increased. Looking forward, uh, we recommend running additional experiments for different feed pressures and retentive flow rates near the recommended operating conditions in order to test our model's assumptions. Maybe implementing computational methods to sim simultaneously solve the non-simplified differential equations, um, the four equations that we uh, talked about earlier, would allow us to get a more rigorous model. We could also explore implementing a recycling stream in which the feed stream would have a higher nitrogen concentration than 79%. Our team also linked our observations in the memory separation lab to the outlooks in the industrial context. Through literature, we learned that memory separation have their unique strengths in which it is cheap and is e easily installed. And to further develop, um, to further the development of memory separations, it would be necessary to conduct research on different types of polymer membranes with higher selectivity values and more economic membrane modules. Thank you, professors on 154. I hope you enjoyed our member separation lab and we are ready to answer some questions.